Hey guys, Knight Rider 7602 here. Look, I know I'm supposed to wait five or ten episodes to give my feelings on this show, but um, it's time I actually since only two episodes came out in this long span of weeks that I had, uh, I want to just talk about them and how I want to give my my honest opinions about this series. What I'm talking about is Sailor Moon. Crystal. This is a re adaptate re it's a redo or I wanna say I want I don't want to say it's a re adaptation. It's more or less like it's a better animated variation of the original Sailor Moon anime that was done long ago. So if you follow the plot to Sailor Moon, which is not that hard which is not that hard, but it's a rather cool story to go with. Uh, Crystal is re really much like, hey, this is how we're going to get new people into the series. They've redone the animations. It looks like they're going to do like a straight-on story of like the uh, of the manga where it's like, oh, get all the scouts together and go. We're going to go and defeat Queen Barrel. I have no idea how to pronounce your name correctly still. After all these years. To be honest, after all these years, I can never pronounce that chick's name correctly. So, anyways. So, Crystal's plotline is very similar. It's about this chick named Usagi, who keeps having this random dream that she is like... She's like this princess, or she sees a princess in her dream. And there's this really handsome prince. And she has no idea what it means. Uh, best thing about the first episode is you get a lot from Usagi. It's a lot of exposition from Usagi. It's like, the opening narration is, my name is Usagi, I'm 14 years old, and I'm a bit of a crybaby, I'm kind of a wimp, but, like, she has a good heart. So, it's like the character you want to root for. Hell, she is the main character, she is Sailor Moon. And... The first time, you're just like, okay, yeah, this this chick's kind of clumsy. Like, how is she supposed to be a defender if all she does is whine and bitch about certain things? She's basically human. This is basically all her human flaws. She's, she's a crybaby. She's not that. She's not smart. Uh, she gets ridiculed by her by her brother on a daily basis. Uh, it's like shit doesn't go right for her, but she has friends and she has a wonderful life. Uh, one day she meets this cat, Luna, who has this crescent-shaped moon on her forehead. And she has no idea, she just saves the cat and just goes on her merry way. Uh, then you get, like, more exposition. Like, this is the, this is my best friend. Uh, her name, I forgot, her, her English name in the, in the dub was Molly. She's like, you know, she's Usagi's best friend and all that. And then, you know, Usagi's late, then there's another exposition, exposition, like, oh, here's my teacher. I don't know why she hates me. And she's like, ah, oh, why can't you be good, why can't you be a good student? Uh, you know, like, that's like the same thing. She's not really that smart. Um... We do get introductions to a lot of the characters early on. We get introduced to Usagi. We get introduced to Mamoru. We don't we don't know his name for sure, but everybody who's seen the show knows it's Mamoru. Uh, we're introduced to Usagi's best friends. We're introduced to the bad guys. We're only we're only introduced to Jedi and Queen Barrel, and. That's all we know for the first episode, basically. Including like, what we know that's from. We have our mom and our brother. So, yeah. So, how is Sailor Moon's, like, diff how this one's variation is different? Well, everybody is up in arms and trying to find the silver crystal. Um, I'm, like, okay, so they're trying to find the silver crystal, I'm guessing, by stealing energy from, from, girl from people, I think. Girls and or people. Because that's where the crystal is supposed to be. They're, they try a jewelry store. They try... 
they try using, they try like drawing in smart people. That was the second episode's plot. And it's really cool, you know, it's like, okay, now we know the bad guy's plot, so how is Sailor Moon going to stop him? Crying. No, I'm not even joking. Basically, Sailor Moon is not like this badass fighter she is like later on in the show. She's like, oh my god, no, no, stay away, no, oh my gosh, and then she falls, and then she starts crying, which, it gives off ultrasonic powers. Yeah, I'm not making this shit up. Ultrasonic tears. Like, the shouts are so loud that it basically stunned the entire room, it stuns the monster, and Sailor Moon is able to finish off with the Moon Tiara Boomerang, which is... Good setup for the first episode. We establish, we really only establish Usagi's character as a whole, and and in the second episode we get Ami. We get her like character establishment, and basically hers is like she's this brainy bookworm. Like, ah, oh, she's super smart. She's the, like, highest of the, cal you know, like, high IQ. She wants to be a doctor. But, of course, like, the whole downside is she has no friends. She she doesn't talk to people. She's studying on breaks. Like, she's, like, a giant bookworm, basically. And she becomes friends with Usagi, and it's, like, super nice. Now, then there's plot point uh, A, the Sailor V video game. Or Sailor V in general. Basically, Sailor V is apparently this superhero. She's a superhero that fights crime. Actual crime. Not like Monster of the Week crime fighting. She fights off bad guys and it seems like she has made a name for herself. She even has a video game which Usaki plays constantly. Which we also get another exposition about the arcade owner. Who she kind of has a crush on. When Ami plays the game and gets the high score, she gets a pin. When Usagi just shakes the machine at random, she gets an item. So basically, here's the thing. Here's what I'm predicting. The Sailor V video game is connected to the Sailor Scouts in, in certain ways. Like, they get items from the machine. It's kind of like in Mega Ranger, how... The Rangers were chosen based on their skills in, in the video game, Mega Ranger. So, there's that. But the difference is, is Ami's pen is her transformation device. And Usagi's pen is a disguise pen. Like, change me into a doctor or something, and you know, like she can get into places. Tuxedo Mask. He does not, he is not throwing roses. I'm really kind of disappointed because if Tuxedo Mask has one cool trademark, it's he cut, well, two apparently, two good trademarks. He has a badass entrance and he throws, he throws enchanted roses at the bad guys. But you don't, but he doesn't do it in this one. He kind of like appears like, Sailor Moon, stop your crying. Use your tiara to save the day. And she's like, huh? Okay, Moon Tiara Boomerang! And destroys the monster. I wish Aunt Ami destroyed her monster in the episode. Well, then again, she's just learning how to use her power. So it's like, so it's like, Mercury Aqua Mist! And she's almost getting attacked, and Tuxedo Mask is like, Sailor Moon, while she's blinded, finish the job. Okay. Moon Tiara Boomerang. You do realize at one point, Moon Tiara Boomerang is just going to be deflected or not going to affect the monster of the week. So it's going to be like, Aqua, Aqua, uh, Jesus Christ. Wow, what the fuck? I got ahead of myself. Uh, Mercury Bubble Splash or uh, Mars Fire Erupts or Jupiter Thunder Shock. Or Venus uh, Crescent Beam. See, I still remember the name of the techniques. So, yeah. Usagi and Ami are both established. 
it hints that next week's episode is supposed to establish Ray, which is Sealer Mars. And then episode four is probably going to be about, I think her Japanese name is Makoto, but don't quote me on that. I th her English name is Lita. Sailor Jupiter, and then we get Sailor Venus, and then all the characters are together, and it's going to be amazing. They're going to fight Queen Barrel and all that. It's going to be awesome. So my prediction for the show is, will it be like the other Sailor Moon series, where it goes crystal, and then it's another thing, and it's another thing, like RS, Super S, which never aired in the US. So I'm just wondering, and will they keep Neptune and Uranus Will Neptune and Uranus actually be lesbians? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm the only one that's singing about that right now. Well, considering I guess Japan handle it, handles it a lot better. Because they don't, like, you know, make out and stuff. It's like dialogue. It's like through the lines they say, like, Oh, like, you've gotten really heavy. I don't want to hear that talk outside of bed. Kind of like, you know, joking around about that. It's pretty funny. It's a cool... Like, good idea, cool thing. I hope the show goes well. Then again, I always... I always feel like I get turned off by it because... I've seen Sailor Moon before. I have watched a lot of the series. I have seen a lot of the movies. Hold on, I just gotta enter this message. By the way, who... I mean, the Pokemon 3rd movie is awesome. Like, for instance, my favorite Sailor Moon movie is Sailor Moon R, Promise of the Rose. I don't care what you say. That is one of my favorite Sailor Moon movies. I mean, it doesn't even have the established, all the established characters like Pluto and the other guys. And I'm pretty, I'm not even sure, like, what arcs have not been done. I know, uh, Black, the, uh... I know, like, Sailor Chibi Moon's, like, uh, she turns evil at one point, and so does Saturn. And so does Sailor Saturn. I really would have liked to see Super S done in America, but it was sad that I didn't actually know that there was something else. There was another season. Mainly because I guess it has something to do with, like, it's something about the characters, uh... Like, they're guys or something. They're established as guys, but then it turns out they're girls. It's kind of weird. It's kind of odd, but who knows. Well, like I said, Sailor Moon is going to be really awesome. Crystal. And I hope it kind of, you know, becomes a big hit. Now, I have a really funny story to share about the uh, first episode. I was originally supposed to watch the first episode the week, the day after Supercon. So, I, yeah, I went to Supercon this year. It was a fun event. Uh, I actually met Tober from Dan's Toku Rants, which is really cool. Uh, here's the thing. They were having a premiere for Sailor Moon Crystal in a viewing room. Now, if you know, like, if you've ever been to cons, you know, like, there's always tiny viewing rooms for, like, animes throughout the day. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, like, at, at 10.30, it's no game, no life. I heard it's a really terrible anime, so I'm going to check it out, and I'm going to review it. Uh, it's like DBZ Kai or anything. It's like different things. So 6 o'clock was supposed to be the premiere of Sailor Moon Crystal. Here's what happened. Me and my friends, we go there, and it's a huge-ass line. We managed to make it through somehow. We, we try to get in, so... We made a chain. My friend held on to my hand. My other friend held on to my Zangpak toe. I was carrying a Zangpak toe around with me, even though it was just a face. I carried a Zangpak toe with me. And uh, we were trying to, like, you know, make our way in. And then we kind of looked around and we're like, dude, this is not worth it. It got me to the point where one of the helpers was screaming very loudly, like, please. Form a nice organized line. You are creating a fire hazard. So my only question was, if you're going to do the premiere of Sailor Moon, why can you do it in a bigger viewing room? I know like like uh, 235 and 236, which were panel, which were the same rooms I have visited all day because there were different panels. 
Those were like the biggest viewing rooms. There were really big viewing rooms you could have just tried to get the episode to play in. And it could have worked. Sadly, yeah, I didn't, so we didn't get a chance to see it. And I was, I was like, okay, I'm going to watch it, like, next day. Well, here's the thing. I left my laptop at my dad's house because my dad took me to the con, and my mom picked me up. So, waited about a full day, got the laptop, and then I had to do some stuff. Then, I had, to do, then college, I had, like, a college orientation, so I went to bed early, did that, go to the college, do the orientation, come back. Here's the thing. I spent like about two or three hours trying to set up my classes. Then, as I thought we were done, I was going to watch the episode, but we had to go back again because I had to submit my test scores. We did that. Um, got back, supposed to do it, but I winded up having to watch. I winded up watching Gime, this week's Gime. And I wound up watching last week's Tokyo because I think I missed it. So it was like a lot of confusing things that I watched the first episode probably. I watched it I watched it once, maybe like Wednesday, afterwards Wednesday. And I watched it again yesterday. Because I was like, what the hell? It's good. Establishes every character. And I'm hoping where they take I wanna see where they take it and how far it goes. Because, you know, we already established Usagi as the leader, crybaby. Ami's the smart one. Rei's supposed to be the fiery, religious, I guess, one. Uh, Bakoto or Alita is the tough, tough, like, tomboyish character. And then, like, Sailor V. So, hopefully, Crystal will be an impact. It's going to be a... It's already a big impact. Can't wait for episode three. Hoping that the series goes super well. I'm Knight Rider 7602, signing out. Looks like I'm going to have to go check out No Game No Life then.